So on, on this Youth Sunday, I, I often will try to preach when I can from down front, but we have some issues with the portable mic. And just so we, you know, I'm going to stay here, but young people, I hope you'll keep your eyes on me. I know it's terrible to look at, but if you, if you can listen to me, um, I'm grateful because I do have some things I want to say directly to you as well, all right? I want to preach to you on this topic that every round goes higher higher soldiers of the cross. We have here in this gospel a kind of a picture of the Christian life. And what is the Christian life? It's funny how we struggle to define that, but actually the biblical answer to it is not very difficult. The Lord simply teaches us that our life is that the, 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 we, we, are, we are living out, if you will, the paschal mystery the dying, rising, and ascension of Christ is our life. That is your life. That is my life. St. Paul says this. He says that we are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ so that also the rising of Christ may be manifest in us. That's your life. Don't look any further. That is the pattern of your life. It is the pattern of my life. I know we, we want it different. We don't want things to be peachy all the time. <laughs> Life is peachy, but it's not all the time. It is sometimes, but there are times where there are suffering and setbacks and trials and difficulties. And this is the nature of our life, that we are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ so that also his rising, his new life might be manifest. And the, the real paradox is that the cross is the tree of life, that it is not a tree of death except that we die to our old patterns, but we rise to something far more glorious and wonderful than we could ever ask or imagine. So this then is fundamentally what I want to look at with you today. And we see this picture, this picture of our life kind of writ in this ascension to Mount Tabor. So we see, first of all, that uh, it teaches us of the, the purpose of trials and it teaches us also then of the productiveness of trials and also the pattern of our life, our trials. So with that in mind, the purpose of trials. It simply says this at the beginning of the gospel. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. Don't miss this. You see, people would just jump right into the story and they miss this point. They had to go up a high mountain. A few of you, some of us have been to Mount Tabor together here in our parish, and some of you may on your own trips to the Holy Land have been there. I can just tell you the mount, the mount is about 22, 2300 feet up, and you don't get there easily. Even today, when we have these special buses, they take us up, and they have to have special transmissions to go up the, uh, up the steep incline of this mountain. And when you're up there, you look like, oh my gosh, it's like you're up in an airplane. You see the beautiful Jezreel Valley, also called the Valley of Armageddon. <laughs> But the beautiful Jezreel Valley is up there, and but it's quite a climb. Now, they did not have buses <laughs> with special transmissions. They had to hoof it. <laughs> they had to climb this high mountain. Are you praying with me? They had to kind of go up on the rough side of the mountain. They had to go up there, and it wasn't easy. I would say to you that it probably took them the better part of a day, maybe even more than a day, to get up to the top of that mountain. And oh, what a beautiful view up there. But before we get there, we've got to climb. We've got to climb. We've got to climb. We've got to be willing to accept the fact that if we want beautiful things in our life, we're going to often have to work very hard to obtain them, again, by God's grace. Now, young people, listen to me. You're at the beginning of your life, and the danger is that you think that just your parents should just give you all these good things. How do you think they've got these good things to give you? Most of your parents had to earn college degrees, had to, had to go out and work. They have to earn money so they can pay the mortgage and have money to buy food, and I could go on and on and on. But think, good things don't just fall out of the sky, usually. There's something that come to us as the fruit of difficulties and of labors, so again, I ask all of you, what do you have that you most value that did not come to you except at the high price of hard work, preparation, and 
just, just simply persevering and working hard to build, if you will, into your, set, into your life a series of blessings. So the very first thing we realize in this life is that most of the things that we value the most come to us at a very high price. It might have just been going to college. Now, <laughs> some people fo- focus on going to college to party. <laughs> but most of us know that you have to pass tests, you have to write papers, you have to attain to certain standards, you finally get the degree, and then they say, that's not good, any good for you, let's get you two more years <laughs> with the master's degree, and next thing you know, the, the doctorate's up, and you, you're six figures in debt, <laughs> and uh, you finally got this degree, but it takes time, doesn't it? It's effort, is struggling, right? I will simply say to you that the things I most value in my life, being a priest, I spent years preparing and studying postgraduate, five years postgraduate. In all my life, I've studied, I've sat at the feet of God, and I've listened and learned so that I can get up and try to preach to you on a Sunday morning something that's of value. It can't come from Charles Pope. It's got to just come from taking that time sitting at the feet of Jesus and saying, speak to me, Lord. Teach me. I, like you, have had to learn very hard lessons in my life so that I could speak to you with a great any credibility at all about the problem of suffering and the problem of gl- and the, the glorious things of God and somewhere in the laboratory of my own life I have had to both suffer and also experience wonderful beautiful blessings so that I can speak to you so you see all of us brothers and sisters the things that we most value require the climb to Mount Tabor they're going to see beautiful things up here but don't forget But the climb is important and necessary. So we are carrying about in our body the dying of Christ, that that pain of the climb, that difficulty of getting to the top of that mountain. We, We have to do that to get there. And that's just part of life. Now you say, that's not fair. God shouldn't make all these things so difficult. Well, I'm going to just remind you, as I tell you over and over again, God did offer us paradise but Adam and Eve, and all of us have ratified their decision, said they wanted a better deal. So welcome to Paradise Lost. God told them that if they chose this way, this different way, it would involve suffering and death, and they still chose it. I don't want to be told what to do. I will decide what I want to do, and I will decide whether it's right and wrong. No one's going to tell me what to do. And God says, all right, welcome to misery. You're either going to trust me and live according to my will, or you're going to suffer a lot. <laughs> and we said, I'd rather suffer a lot than be told what to do. Now, you say, I didn't ever say that. Yes, you have. I've said it. You've said it. We have all said it. So in this paradise lost in which we live, the Lord says, all right, you've chosen the way of suffering and death, but I will allow now that suffering and death to be the very way back to me. And I will not exempt myself. I'll come and meet you there. At the, at the crossroads, literally, of suffering and death. And I will allow that very reality to become the source of growth in your life. It'll be a fruit-bearing tree, and ultimately it'll be the way back to me into the glory of heaven. So you see, this now is the pattern of our life, that we are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ so that also the rising, the new, the new life of Christ might be manifest in us. So we see, therefore, that they go up this high mountain. This is the first thing that we notice. There is this climb, this climb that is required. Now, they get up there, and oh, my brothers and sisters, what a vision. They don't just see the beautiful Jezreel Valley. I mean, it's like beautiful vision from an airplane, a beautiful rich fields down below and all the farmlands and all of the beautiful countryside. There's the sheep over there and there's the farmland, the vineyards over here. And what a view. If you've never been up there, just get online. Just, Just go up there and see the view from Tabor. What a beautiful view. But that's not the really beautiful thing. They catch a glimpse of Jesus in all of his glory. Oh, brothers and sisters, he cloaked that glory because we can't really take it. We're not ready to endure the bright light of his glory yet. And so out of humility and also reverence and concern for us, he cloaked that glory. But for a moment, he took away the cloak. And Peter, James, and John, they beheld his glory as the eternal Son of God. 
His clothing became bright and became like light. And, and, and it says that, that uh, Moses and Elijah were speaking to him. Yes, they're, they're historical figures, but they're also, they also represent the entire Old Testament. Moses, the book of the law, and Elijah, the book of the prophets. And so all of Scripture, it isn't just simply that Moses and Elijah are there, but all of Scripture radiating the glorious truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, that God would one day himself send his Son to save us. He would send us a Messiah who would brilliantly, beautifully, gloriously restore us into the magnificence of, 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 of human glory. But not just human glory, but even godly glory. So... You see that the Lord's finally says to us that one day you and I will share this refulgence of glory. St. Catherine of Siena heard the Lord say to her one day, Catherine, if you were ever to see a, a soul up here with me in glory, you would fall down in worship because you would think you were looking at me. Brothers and sisters, that's our glory. That's our dignity and our future if we're faithful. So then, he not only shows them his glory, but he shows them their future glory. The Lord says, you must be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. Did you hear that? Not just human perfection, but godly perfection is your future if you will let the Lord work in your life and bring you to the gifts that he's brought you. And so, brothers and sisters, what a magnificent vision they get. And Peter and James and John just simply fall down on their knees. They fall prostrate. They can barely endure the brightness of this glory. And so they fall down. But Peter said, oh, Lord, mm, mm, mm. it is good that we are here. It is good to be here with you in all of this glory. Let's just, I tell you what, Lord, we're just going to build some tents here, and we're just going to stay here. Don't, 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 ever, don't ever leave this glory, Lord. In fact, I'll, 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 we'll even make some room for Eli- Moses and Elijah. And Lord, we're just going to stay up here and enjoy the view. Amen? Now, before we see that Peter has to be a little bit corrected here, let's just stop for a minute. And let's ponder that there are times in our life, and I hope in your life, when you and I are expected and we should try to enjoy the fruits of God's grace in our life, to rejoice. God's been good to me. He has made changes in my life, and I'm excited about what he's doing. I see what he's up to, and I I see that I used to be greedy. Now I'm generous. I see that I used to struggle to love uh, so-and-so and and -and so-and-so and so-and-so, and and now uh, uh, I buried the hatchet, and I'm more forgiving. Uh, I used to be unchaste or or, 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 or drunk, and now I'm sober and chaste, and (gasps) Lord's working in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you. Do you have some gifts to rejoice in? Hmm, hmm, that was pretty meager. I was trying to lead you to a good, full-throated amen, all right? Now, young people, have you ever, maybe just, I know you haven't had a lot of tests, but you know, every now and again, you know, you just study hard, and you work hard, and you get an A. Have you ever rejoiced in just getting an A? Uh, None of them, apparently, apparently none of them have ever received an A. They didn't really, how about a B plus? (laughs) All right, come on, right, Amen. I remember I had to study for my biology exam in eighth grade, and it was an important exam. I forget why, but it was my, my grade point average was kind of in the balance, and I was struggling with And so I remember I studied all weekend. I had to memorize things like kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I had to remember all that stuff. Amen? I had to remember, and passed the test. I got an A plus on that. I did not miss one question on that exam. I want you to know... My grade point average rebounded, and I was all right. Amen. All right. So sometimes, you know, you work hard, and you get the A, and you say, thank you, Lord, and you spend a weekend or two rejoicing. Amen? Now, by the way, you see, God has actually built this into our life, but we in the modern world have jettisoned it. What's it called? It's called the Sunday rest. It's called the Sabbath. We're supposed to work six days, and we're supposed to rest and enjoy the fruits of our labor on the seventh day. Now, we, the Old Testament, they had that on Saturday, but we point forward and we fulfill it on, the, on, the, on, on Sunday. Sunday's supposed to be a day where you don't work, you just enjoy the fruits of your labor. Amen? Now, I, I realize that in our modern economy, there's a lot of struggles with this. Not all of us are free to not go to work, and it's kind of sad, but I, I'm not that old. I'm just 58. 
I don't remember a time when pretty much everything was closed on Sunday. It wasn't much open. Restaurants, you know, there might be a matinee at the movie theater. There might be, you might be able to go to the 7-Eleven, but most of the rows were chained off. You could only buy essentials like bread, milk, pampers, <laughs> you know, re- medicines, right? Uh, most things were closed. Most people were just home on Sunday. And they said, oh, it's boring. I'm going to go out and do stuff. See, what happened to us? Now, you see, now we never have a day where all of us can say, Whew, I got a day to rest, to go worship God, be with my family, and enjoy some of the fruits of my labor. Are you praying with me? Try if you can, if you're free to do it, because not all of us are, sadly, in this modern economy. But if you're free to do it, try to build in that day, that day, where you're not laboring, you're not striving. Now, I work on Sundays. <laughs> Although I usually schedule Sunday afternoon for a little bit of a nap, y'all, all right? Okay. But I do take Thursdays off. That's generally my day off. But a time to just say, I worked hard. I need some rest. I get together with Brother Priest. We have a good meal. And we share. And we enjoy brotherhood. But you see, you try your best. Because you see, there comes a moment when we climb up the mountain. And the Lord shows us the blessings of the climb. And he wants us to take a moment and enjoy it. Are you praying with me? So, I don't want to leave. Peter's going to have to be corrected here for a minute, but still, his insight is a good one, right? So they made this climb. It was a hard climb. Always caring about in our body the, the death of Christ. That's the climb. That's the difficulty. But he gets up and he sees, oh, and he sees this beautiful vision of the life of Christ that he's offering us. And he says, I want to just stay right here. I want to just pitch a tent and just stay here. All right. His insight is good, but he, not yet, Peter. We're not finished yet, Peter. And so in effect, the Lord says to him, no, Peter, we've got to go down this hill. This is not yet the final hill that we have to deal with. Because I now need for you to go down this hill with me, Peter. And I need you to go with me to another hill called Golgotha, called Calvary. And once we go up over that hill, that final hill, there will be Mount Zion and all of oh, the heavenly Jerusalem and all of her glory. So in life, we have patterns, right? The pattern is care, always caring about in our body the dying of Christ. That's our sacrifices. That's our sufferings. That's our, our hard work, our labors, our difficulties. That's the Calvary. That's the cross. Always caring about in our body the dying of Christ so that also the, the, the life, the glory, the beauty, the joy of the Christian life may be manifest in us. For now, it's a cycle that repeats But one day we'll go finally to that final Calvary and go to that final heavenly Jerusalem with all of his glory that will never pass away. But we're not there yet. Like Peter, James, and John, we have to go down this hillside to another one. Now, remember then, this is the pattern of our life. Always caring about in our body the dying of Christ so that also the rising of Christ you know, it, it can happen in a day. One day the, in the morning, the phone rings, oh, oh, bad news, you know, trouble at work or whatever, I got to get there quick. And then the phone rings again, no, no, no problem, it's all resolved. Ah, good news. So dying, rising in one day, right? Two phone calls, <laughs> one's about dying, the other's about rising, amen? We sometimes have, uh, in our week, we have ups and downs. Now the world says, thank God it's Friday. But we say, thank God it's Sunday. <laughs> okay, are you praying with me? <laughs> all right. But you see the idea that uh, we have ups and downs in our week. And also we have ups and downs in, in the year and so on. Times, and, and I will say in my own life, I'm sure you too have had difficult times in your life where things were difficult and trying. And other times where there was a great sense of beauty and fruitfulness. So in my mid-30s, it was a time of great personal crisis in my life, and I struggled a great deal with anxiety and disorder and all kinds of things. But now it's given way to a period in my life where I feel much more confident and serene and joyful, and I'm, I'm, I'm much happier. And there may come additional sufferings in my life like, like all of us. We have these cycles in our life. Now, I want to say, though, that it's not just a repeating cycle. 
There's something more going on. And that brings us back to where I began, to the spiritual. Now, this, the spiritual, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. And young people, help me out. Every round goes, okay, not bad. They got the, every round goes higher, higher. So imagine not so much a ladder that's propped up against a wall, but imagine now a spiral staircase. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, and every round goes higher, higher. What's the insight? This is a magnificent, wise, and beautiful insight from the African-American tradition of the spirituals, and it was written in a time of slavery. Suffering produces a lot of wisdom, y'all. It shouldn't have to, but a lot of wisdom comes from suffering. And here's the insight. Let's just say today you're in a joyful place, and there's excitement and joy, and you're excited about something. And you, you come back around, you, you make your journey, and you come back around, though, to the cross side of life, right? Uh, there's the cross, the, 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 the death and the resurrection of Christ. So on one side of the spiral staircase is the death of Christ. On the other side is the resurrection of Christ. On one side is suffering and difficulty and pain. On the other side is fruitfulness and joy and gain. And this is our life. But we don't just end up in an endless circle, but rather this. Let's say we're on the pain side and we come around to the fruitfulness side. But then we go back around to the pain side. But guess what? We're one level higher. We've gained wisdom and understanding and knowledge. We understand more how suffering has a role in our life. We don't have to like it. In fact, if you do like it, I will have to call the psychiatrist for you. But we we have an understanding that there's a place in our life for struggles and difficulties and trials. They, they have a role that brings forth blessings because the cross, we learn, is a fruit-bearing tree. And so, you see, we come back around to the suffering side, but we're not the same. We're one level higher and back around to the joyful side. And it's not the same. We enjoy our blessings even more because we're one level higher. And we come back around to the cross side. And even more, we have wisdom and insight. And we're able to endure in a way we didn't used to be able to endure. We say, I understand, I wish this were not the case, but I will say it brings fruits in my life. So I will accept the cross, not be happy about it, but I will accept it. And little by little, we get higher and higher and higher. And that's the insight of the Christian life. It's not an endless cycle of suffering, death, and then resurrection, but rather it's a spiral staircase that brings us every day closer to the goal, closer to heaven. So I leave you with this. There's a beautiful wisdom then in this old spiritual. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross, at every round goes higher and higher. Every round goes higher and higher. And generally when the choirs sing these songs, they actually start to transpose and you go from, from, uh, you know, from C major to D major and, and, and on you go up the scale and it gets higher and higher. Brothers and sisters, this is our life. Not simply a repeating cycle of suffering and death versus new life, but a spiral staircase. We're going somewhere with this stuff. Are you praying with me? That this life that we live is not just repeating, rinse and repeat, but rather it's a spiral staircase to heaven. So if you will, join me on this beautiful, this beautiful journey, this paschal mystery. What is your life? Your life is you are always caring about in your body the dying of Christ so that also the rising of Christ may be manifested in you. And this cycle brings you higher and higher until one day you walk right into heaven. I got a robe, <laughs> you got a robe, and all God's children got a robe. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my robe and go wear it all over God's heaven. And how do you get there? Take the spiral staircase. Soldiers of the cross, every round goes higher and higher. Somebody say amen.